Okay, good afternoon everyone. So today, uh, we are going to talk about the pretest in social dimension, which was uh, uh, taken yesterday. Okay, so before that, I would like to check everyone, your signal and uh, uh, the presentation if it's already available. We are live via YouTube channel, PCCE YouTube channel, and of course, uh, live via Google Meet. So we have different attendees from different uh, areas from Bacolod. We have from Kadi City. We have from Bacolod, from Kabatuan, of course, Joshua. And we have also from Iloilo City and, of course, a big chunk or group from Calibo. All right? So, again, uh, mag-share muna ako ng slides. So please check if the slides is already available. Can you tell me, Joshua, you're on? So why pa ba? Wala pa ba tayong ano? Slides why pa? All right, sandali lang. All right, is the slides available? Okay, so again, this is pre-test in social science a social dimension i'm sorry so before we start we're going to talk about the a uh, few, few trivia okay when you say trivia it's a bit of information and this is normally uh normally uh it's normally appearing the actual board exam via uh, general information so so general information, they can ask any question, uh, any question about uh, anything here on earth. So therefore, mas malawak yung dapat ang alam ng tao. Can you turn off the microphone for those, uh, you, for those who are watching? Please turn off your microphone so that we can have, uh, we don't have uh, voices around us. We don't have noises that will distract us. So, uh, trivia number one, in the Philippines, Filipinos were introduced to the English language in 1762 by British inv invaders, not Americans. So, if you, if you can, if you learn that the British pala yung nag, nag, ano, nag introduce ng English, not Americans, and Philippines is the world's third largest English-speaking nation next to the USA and the UK. So, uh, dito sa Pilipinas, madaming uh, Pilipino na makapagsalita ng English. That's the reason why most of the Koreans uh, went to the Philippines to learn English because we are the third largest speaking nation of English. Alright? Next one. It's interesting to know also that there exists an old Tagalog word for the law of retaliation uh, or an eye for an eye. So it's an old coming from the Old Testament. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. So, yep, that one is called balantagi. Quite literally translate to mata sa mata, ngipin sa ngipin, or ang kaparusahan ay katugbas na kasalanan nagawa. Yung pagbuhay ang inutang, buhay rin ang kabayaran. So, those are termed to be balantagi. Alright? Next, interesting trivia. Phobias may be caused by memories passed down genetically from ancestors. So if you ever find yourself in public screaming at the sight of a spider, you can blame your great, 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 great grandfather for raising a spider colony. Yun pala, it was transmitted from generation to generation from ancestor. Uh, um, memories can be, right? So next one, we have Boundaries between and among nations. B. Increase awareness of the importance of national cultures and tradition. C. Less and less impact of human activity on the planet Earth. Or D. The incorporation of local and national economies into a worldwide global economy. So the correct answer here is letter D. The incorporation of local and national economies into a worldwide global economy. When you say globalization, the world becomes a global village. So, nagiging isa na tayo. So, you can just feel 
that somebody are uh, that somebody coming from different countries parang katabi mo na lang siya so that's the essence of globalization becoming the world into a global village and that includes of course the national economies and the global uh, the national economy and global relationship so if you've heard the word GATT, what is GATT? GATT is J A T T or General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade. So this is a global economic uh, trading system. Yung GATT, that's the reason why pag sinabi mong GATT, dati-dati yung makakain ng mga grapes, ng mga imported goods, mga apple, at saka yung mga chocolates, those are people coming from uh, rich and those who can afford to buy. But uh, nowadays, iba na. Anybody can eat the food that the richest eat uh, eating. So, hindi na tayo maiiwan because makakain na tayo ng mga pagkain pang sosyal lamang. Bakit? Because of God or the, what we call uh, globalization. So, nagiging globalized na yung business. So, we, be, we tend to become accessible or most of the important goods becomes accessible to us. Yung dati-dati, yung mga Toblerone and Cadbury, those rich people can eat. Now, we can eat that also because it becomes uh, very affordable and available in the market. Alright? So, that one is letter D. The incorporation of local and national economy into a worldwide global economy. Next one. According to the Delors report, there are a number of main tensions central to the problems of the 21st century that we need to overcome. One of them is the challenge to an individual, how he or she can adapt to the changing word, world without forgetting or turning this or back from the past. What kind of tension or conflict is manifested in this situation? So we're talking about conflicts. A. Tension between tradition and modernity. B. Tension between global and the local. C. Tension between the universal and the individual. And D, tension between term and short-term consideration. Let's check the answer. The correct answer here is letter B, the tension between the global and the local. So we're going to analyze Delors Report. is a UNESCO organization or commission report. So here, a number of tension from Central Problems 21st that we need to overcome. So that one is coming from the world, which is global, and it becomes uh, local because there are some what we call some culture in the local uh, situation. So pag nag-conflict ka sa global, kasi yung sinasabi nilang, uh, for example, ha, itong uh, example na kikita ko, ang um, conflict na sa ngayon, example, yung vaccine. Alam nyo people, bakit ba sabi yung iba, sana may vaccine na? Totoo yun, but the vaccine is not... Uh, uh, it's not done overnight na pag uh, nagtulog ka, okay na yung vaccine. Pag nag-trial ka, okay na. It has a lot of trials. That's the reason why swerte tayo because merong MERS-CoV-1 at natawag natin um, yung MERS-CoV-2 kasi ito, yung COVID-19. So, mas madali yung pag-create uh, ng vaccine. So, I guess in time, by next year, tapos na yan. Pero normally, vaccine can be done for uh, years. So, ito yung conflict. Ma, bakit ba tayo magta-trial? Ina-trial na sa ibang nation. Magta-trial tayo because yung kultura, yung uh, response ng isang Asian countries is different from the international scene. So, normally kasi, may mga, may mga vaccine na yung global accepted natin, no reaction. Pero ito yung mga Asian Philippines, yung mga Singaporean, yung mga Korean, nagre-react yung vaccine. So, that's the reason why normally, uh, ganun. So, in terms naman of relationship, there is always a tension between global and the local. Uh, right now, we have a tension with the with the Carboro uh, Shore, which was um, owned by the Philippines, but uh, claimed by China. So, there is a tension between global and the local. The UN and the, US, the U.S. and the rest of the nation don't agree to the China's, uh, Chinese manipulation of that uh, islands. So, therefore, there is global and local tension. Okay? So, the correct answer is letter B. 
Next one, number three. Which of the following features represent the new paradigm shift in education? A. Traditional pedagogies. B. Lifelong education for all. C. Rigid subject matter boundaries. Or D. Knowledge is the only learning outcome. So the best answer here for number three is letter B. Lifelong education for all. So this is now the paradigm shift of education. From very traditional pedagogies into a lifelong education for all. Yung education in the 21st century that is useful in the life of individual. Yung hanggat buhay ka, pwede mo magamit. So, dati-rate, we just uh, focus on the traditional point of view of learning which we are going to follow our own um, parents or teachers. So, uso ang stick doon. Uh, you have to obey your teacher. What teacher says will be correct. Everything that the teacher says is correct. So, wala kang, wala kang, uh, walang debate doon. So, due to the paradigm shift of education towards a lifelong learning, na iba. So, that day, the learner is a pupil. Now, the learner becomes the learner. So, ang tawag natin dati, sudyante, pupil, ngayon, learner. The teacher, before in traditional, is teacher. Now, they are called facilitator of learning. So, there is a paradigm shift in education. And the purpose for that, or the, uh, the representation of that, is purposely for a lifelong education for all. Alright? Number four. What is the measure of relevance in education? Okay, when you talk about relevance, that is importance. Is it A, democratization access? Is it B, functionality of meaningfulness and meaningfulness? C, ability to sustain education through the future? Or D, excellence and effectiveness? So the relevance, of course, it's uh, functionality and meaningfulness. Okay, that's uh, letter B. Number four, what is the concern of multicultural education? Okay, as we say, a multicultural education doesn't only focus in one, in one culture. Multicultural education recognizes the individual differences and the representation of different cultures, most especially here in the Philippines when we encounter a lot of subcultures also from different ethnics. So, iba-iba ang kultura. So, somebody coming from the different uh, ethnicity in one school, iba-iba ang kultura. Which triggers also to have different types of personality inside the classroom. Alright? So, the concern is about multicultural. Now, let's see among the options, what is the concern of multicultural education? A. Anticipating the future and imagining possible and probable futures. Or B, gender equality and harnessing of the role of women in development. Or C, promoting care for the environment and building global culture and ecological responsibility. Or D, the exploration of concept of cultural diversity, similarities, and prejudices to promote cultural understanding. The correct answer there is letter D, exploration of concept of cultural diversity. So, cultural di diversity, sinasabi ko, iba-iba tayo ng kultura. Okay? So, we have culture coming from different ethnicity. Pre similarities, meron din. Prejudices, yes. Because we are uh, normally preju prejudicial to other uh, culture. Dito nga sa Philippines, pag iba yung kulay yan, parang, oh my God, ano ba to? Ano bang... Uh, Ano bang uh, IP ito ng galing? So, that, uh, sometimes it's a prejudicial for us, prejudgment for us to to talk against or discouragement for these people. So, that one is called ethnocentrism. Say, for example, sa ethnocentric na point of view, when the city-bred student feel that they're more superior than those living from the farm, na feel nyo ba yun, Joshua? Pag taga-umaka, uh, uh, ano, ba, ano mong tawag doon? If you're living in the farm, nakatira ka sa malayo, tapos yung taga-syudad, iba yung pananaw nila sa'yo. So they said, oh my God, where's this coming from? 
she's a mountain uh, mountainer o di parang ganun eh, it's an insult but you know people it's reality nangyayari yan sa classroom mismo so and that's the purpose of or concern of the multicultural education okay so ngayon yung gobyerno natin nagbibigay ng uh, ng magandang magandang oportunidad most especially if you are IP what do you mean say IP indigenous people So you have to, they have to provide different opportunity and uh, they give them um, uh, centers talagang may opisina sila to cater their needs and to encourage them to join in our uh, in our community. Kasi yung iba, they tend to isolate because uh, parang natatakot sila kasi parang hindi sila belong. But you know, it's natural. Alright? What about number six? Which of the following may be considered an economic impact of globalization on education? All right? Ano bang impact ng globalization on education? O ba? Madami din kasi may mga mooks na. Ano bang mooks? Sabi ko ka na last time sa EdTech natin, yung mooks or MOC, M-O-O-C is Massive Open Online Course. Bakit meron ng mga MOOCs? International yan. You can study abroad if you want because of course the impact of the globalization. Isa yan sa mga impact. So ngayon, you can just uh, email your notes, you can just call your teacher, you can communicate online. It's the reason why yung mga Pinoy talaga, hindi pala taga, talaga ready for online learning. Kasi if there are some changes in learning uh, process, nagre-react yung Pinoy kasi hindi nga sila handa. Kasi hindi talaga naman handa because in terms of internet nako napaka-slow ng globe at saka ng ng ano ng uh, smart. Oh, yung uh, that's why daw may dito kasi dito yung magsusupply ng uh, lapses ng globe at saka ng smart. Uh, pero uh, ang pinakamabilis daw na internet is uh, Korean. Once you are part of ready of the what we call global education, you normally Uh, it's normally a digital platform for learning. So you can learn at the comfort of your home. You can learn without spending any penny for your pamasahe or for your fare. And you can learn without having a risk of exposure of COVID. All right? That's the, that's the, that's the essence of what we call online learning. So here, Because of that impact in globalization of education, let's look at what is the greatest among the options. A, increasing commercialization of education and the corporate takeover of education. Or B, weakening of the notion of the citizen as a unified and unifying concept. Or C, new technologies of information and communication creates new approaches to learning. Or D, reduction of the state government support and subsidy for education. Dapat niya hindi nire-reduce yan. Dapat sinisupport. Sabi ko nga, uh, kagabi, kanina lang, sinabi ko sa asawa ko, How, what about stopping muna ng build, build, build program and give all the opportunity to have what you call economic recovery and support the educational system. Kasi nang pangatlo lang tayo, Uh, sa budget sa budget ng ng ano ng gobyerno. So what about the giving in uh, giving a big chunk of the budget to education para hindi naman nagdo-donate nang uh, naghihingi si teacher ng donation for the modules. Okay? Bakit ba hindi natin pwedeng bigyan ng internet yung entire school para kay teachers to use? Oh, yun, sinasabi ko mad- mas madali. All right? A reduction uh, here. The correct answer here is letter A. Increasing commercialization of education and the corporate takeover of education. Alright. So, ito na tinatawag na economic impact ng globalization. Ito bang sinasabi mo walang tamang sagot, please? Actually, lahat pwede man naman magiging impact. So, ang tanong dito may be considered as economic impact. So, ito namang letter B, hindi naman siya economic in terms. Ang new technologies is a, a technology, impact ng technology. Ito naman, impact to education. 
ang ang impact ng economic jan ay letter A. Ano ibig sabihin ng increasing commercialization of education and the corporate takeover of education? Nakikig commercialize na yung edukasyon natin. All right? So dati dati kasi pag sinasabing uh, commercialization because of the globalization, uh, they, you can offer all throughout the world. Let's say, sabi ko nga, ang napakaganda ng ating, uh, what you call that, ang ating uh, coverage. Bakit? You can actually offer your education, a school, university, or colleges can offer their program all throughout the world. So, it becomes commercialized. That's true. And the people, uh, the corporate or corporation will take over of it. So, madami din. So, last time when I was in UP, there was a clamor of uh, selling university into, uh, into a private individual. That ang tawag doon is privatization. Which is also proposed by the government right now for PhilHealth. So, ngayon, pinapropose ang gobyerno na i-privatize ang PhilHealth. Dati, pinapropose din ng UP na i-privatize ang UP. Bakit? Kasi dati, when I was studying in UP, I was a broadcasting student, and the, yung ginagamit pa namin is a uh, round table, yung makaluma, yung old style, yung traditional, which a lot of private schools in Manila already utilizes digital platform. That's the reason why nainis, nainis, yung, nainis ako sa mga hindi nakaintindi na mga tao, bakit ba, da, bakit ba pinasara yung ABS-CBN? Dahil daw number one, may violations of frequency, madami daw silang channel, which is totally untrue. Why? Yun ang difference niya. Pag say, for example, when you are using the old platform, which is the, ano tawag doon? Uh, round turn table or round table. Turn table tayo yata yun, yung pamilong na may plaka-plaka ka. Yun yung paggamit namin sa UP. Whereas, some private school utilizes digital. So, ano kagandahan ng digital? Pag digital channeling na class, yung isang frequency, you can chunk it into different channel. So, ang government, nagbibigay ng frequency for, uh, ano tawag doon, franchise, frequ- franchised frequency. Tapos, yung iba, makaluma pa yung ibang mga station. Yung EBS-CBN, they convert that one frequency into black box that is digital to create different channels. So, in terms of uh, what you call that policy, walang binayulate yung ABS-CBN. In the point of view of technicalities, bakit? Isa lang naman talaga yung frequency na ginamit nila. But because also, the government during the time of Pinoy encourages all stations to go digital in order to maximize their earning plus to maximize their coverage. Yun yung ginawa ng ABS-CBN. So, yun. So, that's the reason why I was feel bad about it. Uh, siguro, meron akong reklamo sa gobyerno ito. One thing is that the closure of a, uh, of a media industry that brings a lot of help to a lot of Filipino people. Bakit a lot of Filipino people? Because in terms of coverage, of ABS, in terms of coverage, ha, ABS-CBN is a very good uh, transmitter to different areas. Unless you are a DDS na ayaw mo talaga ng ABS. But if you are objective enough, we need ABS-CBN. And uh, yun. So, impact yun. Yung mga tinatawag na privatization. Uh, what else? Ang PhilHealth, ipaprivatize. Uh, ma- mahihirapan yung mga mahihirap na tao. Uh, example of mga privatized na formerly government-owned uh, Philippine Airlines that the formerly government, government-owned uh, binigay sa kay Lusutan uh, private. So, mahal ang pal. Ano pa? Um, Philippine National Bank PNB binili rin kay Lusutan Ngayon, Allied Bank, PNB na. So, madami pa, madami pang mga agency ng gobyerno na uh, ginagawang private. Private. And once it is private, there is a corporate taking over of uh, of business. So, ganun din sa mga sa mga education. Pag pinaibatize na yan, wala na. 
uh, it becomes a profit oriented. All right, number seven. Which of the following aptly describe Marshall McLuhan concepts of global village? Okay, so A is it the idea that because of the rapid globalization and development in technology, the world has become one global village where increased diversity and difference among people has become more pronounced than ever. B. This is the rapid integration of the planet through media and technology where events in one part of the world could be experienced from other parts of the re in real time similar to what human experience was like when we live in a small villages. Or C. Global village is a kind of global world we are experiencing characterized by fundamentalism, apathy, and conflict brought about by the clashes of culture. Or D, people's cultural and religious identities will be the primary source of conflict in a post-Cold War world as evidenced with the conflict between fundamentalist Muslim and the Western world. What is the best, uh, um, the best thing that describes uh, Mark Lohan's concept of global village? The correct answer is letter A. Okay? Development in the world has become one global village, which uh, where increased diversity and difference among people has become pronounced more ever. Alright? So, letter A. So, any questions later on, please receive, uh, re reserve it after the discussion. Number eight. When planning her lesson in units, Mrs. Jones is carefully to include books and resources from a variety of culture and ethnic group. What kind of education is this? A. Multilingual education. B. Transformative education. C. Multicultural education. Or D. Gender-free education. We're talking about uh, the inclusion of books and resources from a variety of cultures and ethnic groups that talks about letter C, multicultural education. Next item, number nine. Which of the following is not a characteristic of globalization? We're almost talking about globalization. We had defined already what globalization is. Among the option, options there, what is not included? A, stretching a social, political, and economic activities across political frontiers, regions, and continents. B, the growing magnitude of interconnectedness and flows of trade, investment, and migration. Or C, a speeding up of global interactions and processes through worldwide system of transportation and communication. Or D, the expansion of economic protectionism and the isolation of poor countries. What is not there is letter D. Of course, doesn't talk about relationship, doesn't talk about isol uh, uh, globalization, doesn't talk about isolation and protectionism. So that is not included. So A, B, and C are all globalization. Next item, number 10. Which of the following illustrates the major paradigm shift of education in the 21st century? Okay, A. Shift from rigid subject matter to a more interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary pedagogical approach. B. Shift from values education and emotional learning to knowledge dominated curriculum. C. From contextualized themes generated from global and local realities to pre organized subject matter. Or D from more flexible learning style to a prescribed pedagogy. The best answer here is letter D, from more flexible learning style. I'm sorry. I guess this is not the correct answer. The correct answer is letter A. Is this the one you're asking, uh, Chris? Major paradigm shift of the 21st century is from rigid to a more interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary approach. That's letter A. Letter D cannot be. Why? Letter D. There must be something confusion with the answer here. 
D is from more flexible to a prescribed. That is the 21st century. Kasi from traditional to facilitating style tayo. Tama ba ako, Joshua? So, D is not a correct answer. Medyo na ano lang, medyo kinopya lang to ng, uh, ng ating uh, encoder. But this one is not correct answer. So, the correct answer is letter A. From shift to rigid subject matter, traditional yung rigid to a more interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary pedagogical approach. Alright? Hindi ko kanina nakita. So, eh, uh, please check that the correct answer is A, not D. Number 11. What educational approach, perspective, recognizes the knowledge and experience of women, racial groups, and ethnic groups as being just, as valid, and relevant as the knowledge of dominant groups in a mainstream academic discourse? A. Is that a transformative education? Is that a multicultural education, inclusive education, or global education? Alright? So the correct answer here is letter, alright, inclusive education. Why inclusive education? We don't have uh, no discrimination of whatever you came from, what, wherever you came from, whatever you are. Uh, there is acknowledgement of, of uh, LB, LGBTQ Lahat yan in-acknowledge sa inclusive education. Okay? Tinatawag lang natin na global education. It is for global purposes. Multicultural if it acknowledges different culture. Transformative education if it gears towards uh, the societal transformation. So, the correct answer here is inclusive education. Number 12. How does the notion of cultural relativity and variability affect the teaching learning processes in school? A. The students of varied cultural background will in no way affect no way affect the way they will learn the lesson in school. Is that B the student can readily adjust to the way the teacher initiates the learning in school because children are adaptable beings? no matter what culture they come from. Or C, the child's cultural background influences the children's way of interpreting and viewing the world. Hence, teacher must consider the children's world view when teaching. Or D, the teacher should be wary of different cultural points of view and must make sure that student will see things the same way. All right? So, notion of cultural relativity and variability, okay? Of course, the correct answer is letter D. The teacher should be wary of different cultural points of view and must make sure that student will see things the same way. Why? Kasi si teacher yung magiging neutralizer of all the different cultures of the students inside the classroom. So, dapat teacher must be oriented. Teacher must be... Uh, must be a, uh, must have a better perspective of multicultural relationship and uh, relativity. Relativity. Iba iba kasi kultura natin, most especially in the Philippines. So minsan we don't understand that the teacher is itself. Siya pa yung unang bully ng estudyante. So the reason why we need to improve our relationship, our knowledge about our culture. And how to acknowledge that inside the classroom. Pag para, magiging isa na lang yung pananaw ng mga bata sa loob ng klase. Number 13. Which among the following is the focus of civic education? Okay? Civic education. A. Promote understanding of human rights, concepts, and values to enable learners to comprehend and transform condition which give rise to human rights of violations, or B, learning for effective participation in democratic and development processes at both local and national level, or C, foster a vision of education for sustainable development and care for the environment, or D, 
empower people with the skills, attitudes, and knowledge to build a peaceful world based on the justice of human right, rights. So as you can see, class, if you're going to talk about the uh, options provided, parang lahat naman man pwede. This is in the actual board exam. What makes you so very uh, careful because yung mga options natin masyadong malapit. And minsan, this makes the examinations very difficult, right? And challenging. So the correct answer here is letter B. Learning, ang focus ng civic education, effective participation in democratic and development processes of both local and national level. So if you can see, B talks about A, C, and D. So these are so-called all answers is correct, but you have to choose the best answer. And you know, people, when you're talking about uh, civic education, yung sabi nila, Uy, makilahok ka. Ano ba ibig sabihin makilahok? Uh, when you say makilahok, uh, join the National Development Program. Makijoin ka sa, sa pag-develop ng ating uh, mahal na Pilipinas. Huwag ka lang dyang umupo and just being selfish and you get what you want. Oh, okay ka na. So, may, may, may ano tayo, may obligasyon tayo um, magiging parte ng society because whether we like it or not, we are part and parcel of this uh, Philippines. Alright? We're part and parcel of the democratic processes. We're part and parcel of the national governance. We're part and parcel of all that's happening around us. Alright? So, number 15, uh, 14. Which of the following initiate would not help a school address uh, a school address diversity? Okay, again, which of the following initiative would not help a school address diverse diversity? So, uh, when you say diversity, it's individual differences. So all choices is correct except the not there. Okay, A using ability grouping. B Using cooperative learning. C. Working with neighborhood groups. Or D. Using culturally relevant teaching uh, method. The not answer there is letter A. Alright. So I would like to give you a clue. Which it is the answer? If you can see, we're talking about help school address diversity. Okay? Would not help. Using cooperative learning. Check. It will help address the diversity. Working with neighborhood, check. It will help school address diversity. Using culturally relevant teaching method, check. It will help uh, develop individual to forget about cultural diverse, diversity. And B in one, except letter A, using ability grouping. What do you say ability grouping? O lahat ng matatalino dito. This is the reason why sabi ko, ito yung sectioning ng ano ng uh, ng public school which is homogeneous pag section 1 ka matalino matalino ka parang ganun parang oh my god it makes a sense those who are uh, third section fourth section or even last section to feel awkward hindi sila matalino because parang ni label mo na sila and that is against diversity all right so yun number 15 if the teacher is emphasizing the development of the learner's competency to transform knowledge into innovations and job creation, what pillar of education does she is actually promoting? Sabi ko last time, may lima tayong pillars of learning that is learning to know, learning to do, learning to live together, or learning to be. Dagdagan ko ng isa, learning to transform oneself and society. So let's talk about this uh, question. It talks about what pillars of learning? So, maghanap tayo ng clue. Kasi yung iba nahirapan dito. But most of the time, uh, board examination talks about this one. Okay? When you talk about the different pillars of learning, hanapan mo siya ng clue sa tanong. And the clue is that their learner's competency. Uh, Joshua, can you hear me? Learner's competency. 
to transform knowledge into innovation. That one, pag nakita mong competing si Joshua in the examination, that is pillars of learning to do. Okay, competency talks about skills. So, it means to say to do. But it talks about information and knowledge to know. It talks about relationship, live together. Talks about holistic development of individual to be. When you, it talks about your sacrifices towards the success of others, that is learning to transform oneself and society. So, ang tamang sagot dito is letter B, learning to do. Alright? 16. What pillar of education which emphasizes learning to be human through acquisition of knowledge, skills, values, conducive to personality development? Okay, we're talking about here. Emphasizes learning to be human. Okay, however, acquisition of knowledge, skills, and values. This one is learning to B, holistic map. Letter B, D, I'm sorry. Human practices, values conducive to personality development. Ito yung end point mo. That is learning to B. Number 17. A class is composed of students coming from different ethnic communities, including Muslims and Lumans. They seem to have difficulty understanding each other's behavior and point of view. What should the teacher do? Okay? Uh, challenge to the teacher. A. Introduce multiculturalism in the class and provide activities for practice. Is it B. Threaten the students that if there are students who do not behave and tolerate of their classmates, she will be dropped from the class. Parang no, no, and B. What about C. Inform students that they will all be learning new ways of thinking and behaving in this class so they might as well leave their cultural idiosyncrasies at home. Or D, assign bright students to monitor control and behavior of poor students. Wow, uso yun nung high school. Ako uso itong assign-assign. Matatalino lahat ang ina-assign. Pag bobo ka, wala kang papel. So the correct answer there is letter A. B, C, and D is not definitely applicable to the classroom. So, alam mo, pag actual board exam class, you're gonna look at the choices lang. Alam na alam ko na alam mo yung sagot. The clue is different culture. It's multiculturalism. So, they have you have to introduce uh, multiculturalism in the class and activities for practice. Pwede mong, o ito, galing ito sa Muslim. So, you can sing the Muslim. Um, I've been handling the class in uh, in Sambuanga. Yung klase ko, almost 80% Muslim, 20% Christian. But alam nyo, uh, ang galing ng mga Muslim mag-blend sa Christian. Bakit? Dalawa yung prayer. The first prayer is Muslim. The second prayer is Christian. Whichever comes first. Uh, yung natatawa ako, kasi pagkanta ng Muslim, kumakanta naman ng Christian. But the Muslims are really religious in singing their prayer. Nang kumanta na yung power of love, pang Christian na yun, Muslim pa rin ang kumakanta, yung Christian, tamad na tamad magkanta. Parang sa sinasabi ko, ano ba nangyayari sa mga Christian? I'll tell you people, this is now, that was the already my picture of multicultural uh, diversity of kinds of students. Iba-iba. Kahit naman sa classroom, iba-iba din yan. That's the reason why. You cannot please everyone. But, you can at least see the point of view na ang tao talaga ay iba-iba. Si teacher, depende kung paano niya i-recognize yun. Alright? So, huwag nating sabihin dahil kasi may mga, yung even at my house, yung mga na, nanay ko dati, yung mga tao sa kapaligiran ko, pag sinasabing, ay, Muslim yan, talaga naman ISIS talagang nasa utak ng iba or ano ba yun? Ang, namama, ang, ano, ang Abu Sayyaf. Hindi lang lahat ng Muslim abo saya. At hindi lahat ng Muslim manluloko. At hindi lang lahat ng Kristiyano mabait. Meron pa nga, di ba? Same, same. But you have what we call acknowledgement of the multicultural diversity. Gaya, kaya, bakit? 
sa Pilipinas, grabe yan. Bakit? Madami tayong ethnic group here in the Philippines. Iba-iba ang kultura ng kada ethnic, ng bawat ethnic group. Alright? Language pa nga lang, iba na yun. Okay, 18. Which of the following qualities should be developed by the pillar of learning to live together? Sabi ko kanina, pag live together, relationship. Okay, let's uh, see. A, strong appreciation of the diversity of human race. B, readiness to take risks and resolve or manage conflict. Conflicts. B, C, scientific spirit and an inquiring mind. Or D, complete fulfillment of human in all the richness of his and her personality. The correct answer here is letter A, strong appreciation of diversity of human race. Ang B naman, ah, readiness to take risks, hindi naman tama. Yun, ha? Because we're not taking risks just to resolve or manage conflict. Okay? We're talking about relationship and it should start in positive way by strong appreciation of diversity. Number 19. Which of the following statements about gender is correct? Natatawa ako pag gender, ano? Uh, A, gender is biologically determined. B, gender is socially and con culturally constructed. C, gender roles are the same in all societies. Or D, gender is an ascribed status in society. Okay, ano bang tamang sagot mo, Joshua? Ikaw katanungin ko. Correct answer is letter B. Gender is socially and culturally constructed. Ma'am, bakit gender is not biologically determined? Kasi, uh, Joshua, when you talk about gender, it's not about the sex. Sex is biological. When you were asked, yes. what is your sex? Uh, what is sex? Uh, uh, sex, yung ba, mga questions, yung uh, form, whatever. Uh, you said male or female. That is sex. Male or female. What about gender? Tatlo ang gender. Feminine, masculine, alanganin. Tama ba? Uh, so, pag sinabing gender, may, may tugma yun ang ikatatlo. Uh, yung tinatawag kong alanganin. But the alanganin is term to be neuter. And gender is socially and culturally constructed. Pag sinasabi mong gender ang biological, uh, bi uh, is biologically determined, maybe you're referring to sex. Sex is reproduction. So therefore, male or female. Man, bakit man pag sex, sabi mo, male or female? Kasi, saan kami yung mga bakla na napunta? So yung mga bakla, male pa rin sila because biologically, they have penis, tama? Ang babae na, na ano siya, na T-bird or lesbian, pasok pa rin siya sa babae. Bakit? She has vagina. Uh, yung katawan nila is reproductively structured. Alright? So, yung gender natin is socially and culturally constructed. So, the correct answer is letter B. Number 20. UNICEF and UNESCO are two KUN, uh, two KUN agencies which are particularly active advocates of education for peace. Which of the following is not supported by UNESCO in promoting peace in the school? Alright, we're talking about the not again. So all three is correct except the not there. A. Uphold children's basic rights as outlined in the Convention on the Human Rights of the Child. B. Develop a climate that models peaceful and respectful behavior among all members of the learning community. C. Demonstrate the principle of equality and non-discrimination in administrative policies. Or D. Enable the teacher to stress peacemaking in social studies classroom only when necessary. So what is the not there? It's letter D. Alright? Enable the teacher to stress peacemaking in social studies classroom. Only when necessary. Kaya related to Joshua. Why? Because hindi tama yun na uh, kung kinakailangan lang. Dapat at all terms, at all costs, you have to promote peacemaking. 
in your social studies class. So, that is the nap there. So, A, B, and C are all uh, pasok sa UNICEF and UNESCO, uh, UN agencies. Alright? Advoca advocacy. Number 21. Ang hahaba ng mga question ngayon, ha? One way to advance peace education is through partnership of various non-governmental organizations, education institutions, United Nations, specialized bodies which link ideals of peace with research and practice. One such significant example is the Hague Agenda for Peace and Justice for the 21st century. What is the aim of the Agenda's global campaign for peace education? Okay, we're talking about the aim. A. Helps coordinate local initiatives and unite educators in a common practice of educating for a culture of peace. B. Supports the UN, UN decade for a culture of peace and non-violence for the children of the world and to introduce peace and human rights education into all educational institutions. Letter C. Brings together multiple traditions of pedagogy, theories of education, and international initiative for the advancement of total human development and care for the environment through learning. And D. Serves to enhance learning process, or I'm sorry, learning across subject like conflict resolution initiative. The correct answer is letter B. Okay, and that is supports the UN decade for a culture of peace and non-violence for the children of the world and to introduce peace and human rights education into all educational institutions. Number 22. The impact of conflict on children, whether as victims of war or child soldiers, has been brought to world attention through media, international organization, and eyewitness accounts. What is the best thing to do to help children affected by conflict? Alright? So, yung uh, pag may hindi ka mo kayang sabihin, or may kaya kang may, may mga very significant issues ka na tinatago mo lang, but you want it to be an eye-opener, normally they go to media. Ba, ba, ma, bakit sa media sila pumupunta? Yung mga taong, ano, bakit sa media? Number one, when people ha having an issue directly goes to media, they feel that they are secured because they are there are Filipino people who are watching over that issue. That's why napakaganda ng role ng media. So you might be... You might be wary or you might be listening to some some issues. Bakit bakit nilelabel nila na uh, isang ano ang go um, Duterte administration, isang um uh, martial law o nagbubusal ng mga media industry. Kasi a weak government always aim to close the media organization. So, pag ikaw kasi government, sabi nga ni Miriam Santiago, ha, a strong government always acknowledge the role of media. So, here in our question, what is the best thing to do to help children affected by the conflict uh, between, uh, during the war of soldiers uh, before? A. Employ education to regain parts of the lost children and to facilitate the experiences that support healthy, social, emotional, and intellectual growth and development. B. Provide employment opportunity for them as well as their parents to attend financial independence. Or C. Offer them to migrate to neighboring countries of foreign refugees or to secure their safety by imposing strict curfew hours. The best answer, of course, is letter A. But letter A, hindi lahat ng longer ang tanong sagot ha, but you know, among the options, A talks about with rationality. Okay? So, most especially if these children <coughs> is being exposed to war. Number 23. 
the United Nations is com committed to address climate through mitigation and adaptation. Which of the following is the best way of addressing the issue? A. Deepen strategic and operational collaboration with the international and regional organization, including international financial institutions and regional development banks and other stakeholders. B. Developing a policy framework that identifies basic elements needed to prevent human rights violation. Or C. Facilitate and execute agreement on reducing emission from deforestation and forest degradation to protect forests and sustain the livelihood of the people who depend on them. Or D. Enhancing collaboration among humanitarian organizations, particularly from the Global South and at the local, national, regional levels, to strengthen community resilience and emergency response and establishment and a monitoring system to assess progress in the implementation of pre uh, preparedness measure. Okay, so now, what is the correct answer that addresses the issue? It's letter C. Okay, we're talking kasi about uh, address climate through mitigation and adaptation. You might be wondering, mam dami nangyayari natin sa kapaligiran. We have what we call hailstorm, we have sandstorm, we have typhoon, we have volcanic eruptions. And uh, we have a lot of things that's happening around us. And that one is brought to you uh, because of the climate change. Huh? So climate change is a very uh, critical issue right, right now about environment. So the correct answer there among, among, the, among the options is letter C. Execute agreement on reducing emission from deforestation and forest degradation. Uh, a lot of people has been talking about dolomite. Tuwang-tuwa yung tao na nag-white sana, yung mga taga-kalibo dyan, no? Uh, you must be proud of your Boracay because it's natural sound. Uh, sand, I'm sorry. Natural sand. Yung dinala sa Manila Bay is an artificial sand. Uh, dolomite yun, coming from one uh, part of Cebu. Akoy of Cebu. Uh, Cebu. Uh, okay naman, natutuwa yung tao kasi pumuti nga yung sun. But yung issue naman doon, yung pinagkunan noon. Okay, so yung ako yung Cebu will be suffering. Of course, that includes the livelihood of the people. And of course, the degradation of what we call uh, forest areas of the Philippines. Ang liit-liit na nga ng Pilipinas tapos uh, inabuse pa. Parang nakakatakot yun kasi pag minahan, uh, last uh, Gina Lopez uh, moment in uh, DNR she closes all, most of the uh, violating uh, uh, mining company that includes the mining company of my family name uh, Defensor but you know uh, ano yun, sad moment yun kasi lugi yung mining company maraki yung lugi nila uh, pero, you know, that was the best thing to do, suppose. If the government must be clean, they are not afraid to close all the mining companies because uh, this will affect the livelihood and the future children of the lab. Alam nyo, nung, nung, nung nag-lockdown ng two months, hindi talaga lumalabas yung tao sa Metro Manila. Gumanda yung kapaligiran na nawala yung smog what is smog? It's a combination of smoke and fog. Smog tawag doon. Sa Metro Manila, you can see definitely, clearly, the the sunset in the Manila Bay. Alright? But ngayon, ano mangyayari? Wala na. Kasi, bumalik sa dati, ang dolomite na yan, baka one year, two years lang yan, baka inabuse na yan, or baka mag-cause pa yan ng problem later on, or na-wash out na ng typhoon, or waves, alright? So, yun yun. Number 24, why are educational environments very crucial to peace education? A, the social, cultural, economic, and political context in which the educators work, shape the specific content and methods they choose for peace education. Letter B, the variety of different educational settings 
from rural to urban school-based community and within the formal curricula or non-formal popular education projects are relevant to peace education. Letter C. Many teachers infuse peace education into traditional academic subjects such as literature, math, science, history, language, civic, and all parts. And D, all of the above. The correct answer here is letter D. So all of that can be crucial to peace education. All right? So A, B, and C. But the mind you class, in the actual board exam, normally we don't answer all of the above. All right? And uh, a very good test writer never wrote an option, which is all of the above. So, baka kasi yung magiging character ng mga tao is that uh, when they see the options of the all of the above, they, they immediately choose it as a correct answer because anyway, that was not put there without a purpose. But I, th I tell you, sometimes it was just a part of their destructors. Yung all of the above. So, do not stick to all of the above, above as the correct answer. You always find ways to eliminate the all of the above. Alright? Number 25. What is celebrated every December 10? Is that Mother's Day language? Or is Mother, Mother Language Day? Human Rights Day? Earth Day? International Day of Tolerance? That one is letter B. Human Rights Day. Alright? Letter B. Number 26. Filipinos tend to look the world and nature as people with supernatural being and governed by forces above him. They manifest. This is Filipinos. Wala na tayong apostrophe yan dyan dapat. Okay. Filipinos tend to look at the world and nature as people by natural being and governed by forces above him. They manifest to what? A. Particularism. Personalism. Non-rationalism. Rationalism. What's your answer there? Non-rationalism. The correct answer is letter C. That is non-rationalism. What is that all about? When you say non-rationalism, it refers to what I rational, being reasonable, non-rationalism, Without reason, just believe it. May kultura tayong ganun, di ba? Example. Ano ba sa kalibo yung pinapaniwalaan nyo? Naniwala ba kayo sa luya? Yung luya, ginger, just to make you good, yung nang, parang yung mga may sakit, nagpaluya-luya, luya-luya sa tawag ng dito, luya-luya yun. Um, Joshua, ano tawag natin dito? Luya, Luya? Luya. Oh, di ba, no? Paluya. Paluya. Okay. That is non-rationalism. Walang basihan, you just have to believe. Sa, sa antike, we call that mapatawas ako. In some areas, albularyo. Ano pa? Hampol. Steam bat. Anong tawag doon? Tuob. Ano tawag sa kalibo doon? Tuob din ba? So, yes, ma'am. Tuob din. So, walang basihan siya. You have to believe. Supernatural, aswang, agta, kama, kama. Ano pa yon? Madami pa. Uh, tamawo. May mga mga tao hindi nakikita. That is a supernatural being. You have to believe even when there's no basis. Tama? And that is a belief of non-rationalism. Madami yan. Tabi-tabi po. Ihihit po ako. Di ba ba yung ganun? Uh, oy, mga anito-anito. That is non-rationalism. Magluluto ka, you have to put something there uh, in the altar. That is non-rationalism. You have to call all the spirits to eat with you. That is non-rationalism. Walang basis, but you have to believe it. Okay? That is one of the most uh, popular culture for Philippine, of Filipinos. Napaka-ano yan na kultura ng Pinoy, ano? 
Uh, kasi ang nanay ko, kahit nasa ospital ka, sabi niya, inaswang ka, nakikita sa luya. Ha? Parang ganun. Bakit? Because doon tayo nang nag-grow. Nawawala ba? Sa sa kapanahon na niya yun, pwede nawawala kasi yung anak ko, hindi niya nakilala yung mga different types of monster. Sabi, mami, anong maligno? Maligno. Uh, iba't ibang uri ng mga monster. So, ang kilala na nila na monster or mga ghost, white lady, parang gano'n. Okay? So, next one. Number 27. Refers to the total way of life share by members of society. Sociology, biosociology, race, culture. Okay? The correct answer here is letter D. That's culture. So, sociology is the science to study about the society. So, culture, it's a, it's a manner. It's a manner. It's an attitude. It's a character that we share by members of society. Example, ano ba kultura meron tayo? Chismis. Chismosa ang Pilipino. Do you agree? Wala talaga mag-agree, oh. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Lahat tayo chismosa. We love talking other people's life. And you know, sa showbiz, yun yung tinatawag natin yun ng the bus. Okay? Because we love chismis. And we also backbite. Bakit pa yun tayo backbite? Kasi kultura ng Pinoy, huwag mong sabihin ang totoo. That's it. Uy, girl, tingnan mo ako. Maganda ba ako? Sabi niya, Oo, maganda ka, pero sa totoo lang, hindi ka maganda. Sinabi niya lang yun kasi ayaw niya kang masaktan. Oo, maganda ka. Asa ka pa. Ganun-ganun pa. Ano pa? Girl, maganda ba hair ko? Bagong gupit. Sino ang gupit niya? Papatayin ko. Parang ganun. But, bakit ba tayo ayaw magsabi ng totoo? Kasi we don't want to hurt people. That's why Filipino culture nagiging plastic sila. Okay? So, uh, libakera. Bakit siya libakera? Kasi kung sino wala, siya daw yung pagtutuunan ng pansin. Parte yan ng kultura natin. Alright? So, if there's somebody who uh, talk about against you, wag mo nang pansin din kasi natural na yun sa Pinoy. Number 28. Which are the rules of conduct that specify how people ought to think and a code. Is that norms, values, sanctions, subculture? The correct answer is letter A. It's the norm. The rules of conduct specify how people ought to think and act. Okay, for example, wag kang magsalita if others are still talking. That one is norms. Uh, wag kang pumasok sa bahay na hindi sa'yo. That is norms. Tumaw, mag, mag ano ka muna, mag, uh, what is katok? Ano ba to? Magnak ba? Ano tawag doon? Magnak ka muna before you enter a room or a place. That is a norm. Okay? So, yung iba naman, ang bastusan lang. Tao po, diritsyo-diritsyo siya sa loob ng kwarto. Alright? Okay, that one is called norms. Number 29. Which when violated because the violator to be regarded as eccentric, weird, Tama bang spelling ng word na to? Or crazy? Is that fuckways, mores, lost, institution? The correct answer is D. Again. Which when violated because violated be regarded as eccentric? Weird. Parang wala sang sagot. Ito siguro si... Ito sinasabi ni ano? Fuckways man, ano eh? Fuckways man. Yes? Crazy, yes, no crazy. Oh, wait, so, so. Kasi mga weird and crazy, mami, fuck, wait. Oo oh, nga, parang hindi sagot yung institution, parang hindi siya dogma. Tama ba? I would rather go to fuck, wait. Hindi naman siya Morris, hindi naman siya law. It's letter A. Palitan natin sagot, ha, kasi it's not institution. Okay? Sa, inco sa encoding, yeah. siguro, nagkamali. So, the fuck ways is the correct answer here. Letter A. 30. Thank you so much, guys, for the correction. 30. Which of the following does not describe the true nature of culture? A. Culture is learned from interaction with other people. 
Or B, culture tells us how we ought to act and believe. And culture is transmitted through biological inheritance. And culture helps us solve problems and adapt to our environment. We're looking for the not. So all three is correct except letter C, I guess. So yes, it's letter C, transmitted to biological inheritance. Hindi yan tinatransmit. Yung biological inheritance natin, yung curly hair, yung fair complexion, yung, uh, yung ano natin, hereditary traits, yun yung tinatransmit. So ang kultura, hindi tinatransmit through biological inheritance. Ang kultura is nurturing, natatransmit through interaction with other people. So that C is not belong. Next, na next number, 31. Social institutions are enduring social structures that provide a ready-made arran arrangement to meet basic human problems. Which of these basic social institutions provide community coordination, law and order, and defense? The correct answer is letter D, government. But when it talks about the smallest unit of society, that's family. But the coordination of law and order and defense, that is government. Now, you may ask, Ma'am, may, uh, may karapatan ba ang tao na isubsidize ng gobyerno in terms of pandemic like this? The answer is yes. Karapatan ng bawat tao supposed na isubsidize yung pangangailangan ng mga tao. Okay. I mean, discuss it further, guys. Uh, example, pandemic ngayon. Walang trabaho ang karamihan sa atin. Karamihan sa mga tao, mga negosyo, lugi. Kahit kainan, lugi. Kasi pag walang school, yung immediate karinderiya dyan ay magkuklose din dahil wala siyang kliyente. So, ang dami. Unless you are a government employee or um, ang, ang, ang negosyo nyo is uh, essential. Anong essential? Uh, grocery stores. Um, supermarkets. Essential kayo. Del delivery vans. Tracking. So, maganda ang negosyo. Pero yun sa mga katulad ng mga schools, tutorial center, review centers, uh, mga karinderiya, lugi sila. Madaming lugi. In fact, people when I'm uh, rooming in the city, ang dami-dami space for rent na. Unti-unti na nag-close yung mga businesses. So, the government should come in because that's part of the social institution that the government should provide uh, law and order defenses. And, uh, ano, and uh, provision. So, dapat yung gobyerno magbibigay ng tinatawag na recovery program. Actually, nagbibigay sila ng recovery program, pero pinipili. Sino bang, sino bang naapektuhan dito? Yung mga taga-farm, Joshua, would you agree, hindi sila apektado? Yung umuuwi sa mga malalayong lugar na may, may, may immediate backyard na for the food, Siguro apektado sila sa transportation, whatever. Pero, in terms of, uh, of sustain sustainability, hindi sila apektado. Ang apektado ay ang mga worker. Yung parents mo, worker, apektado sila. Kasi lumiit yung salary. So, the government should provide assistance to that. But the assistance the government provides, napakalimitado. Mas marami pa yung budget, yung dolomite sa may Manila Bay. Hindi yan makakain ng tao. Mas dami pang budget sa intelligence funds is 4 billion. Madami pa yung budget sa PhilHealth na kinukurakot naman ng mga officials. Madaming budget sa ibang bagay. Sa build, 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 napakalakay ng budget. But I want also to change the minds of the people na kailangan talagang tinatawag na economic recovery program. Ano economic recovery program? Yung mga business people, yung mga working group provide ng subsidy ng gobyerno. So that they can live a life and they can sustain the economy. Hindi talaga mamamatay yung ekonomiya pag wala ng mga business people. Okay, that's one. So the correct answer there is letter D, government. Number 32, which element of social structure refers to a set of norms specifying the rights and obligations associated with the status? A, value. B, value trait. C, role. D, dysfunction. We're, look, we're looking to a set of norms. Alright? Specifying the rights and the obligation. The correct answer is role. 
Okay, so let's talk about the value. This function naman, madaming this function is not function. So, ibig sabihin, those are deviants or violation. So, yung tatawag natin value, ang value iba-iba sa bawat tao. Alright? There are some people who valued money compared to relationship. Do you agree? Example, may boyfriend ako, dalawang boyfriend, ang isa mayaman, pero hindi ko mahal. Itong isa, si Joshua, mahal na mahal ko, pero walang pera. So, nagmamanifest dyan ang value ko. How? Based on my choices. Tama ba ko? So, pinili ko yung may pera. So, what I value more? Is it relationship or money? Siyempre, money. Okay, tanong, ako nagtatanong, ako din nagsasagot. Okay? So, that is value. So, iba-iba yung value ng tao. So, iba naman, ayaw mag-abroad kasi ayaw nila iwan yung pamilya, pamilya niya. So, ang value system niya is family-oriented. Ang iba naman, gusto mag-abroad para maraming pe pera. So, practicality or ang value system niya naman ay practicality. Okay? Kasi hindi naman natin makakain mahal yung ano natin. Yung, yung pamilya natin kung wala na tayong pera. So, yun yun. So, uh, whichever is that, represent your value system. Alright? Yung pinili mo is also po, is already called value trait. Alright? So, yun yun. So, ako naman, I value more on relationship than money. Okay, number 33. What social process occurs when people work together to achieve shared goal? Is that exchange, competition, conflict, cooperation? The correct answer is letter D. That one is cooperation. Alright? Is conflict natural? The answer is yes. In any organization that you might be in later on, in any relationship that you are in later on, in any friendship relationship, uh, sexual relationship, parents, daughter, or son relationship, there will always be conflict, alright? However, conflict can be resolved. Okay, through uh, talk, negotiation, ganon, alright? So, competition is also true. There are a lot of people who compete with you. Totoo yan. So, sa classroom, teachers should not promote competition. Teachers should promote cooperation. Alright? That's why, which is better, individual learning or cooperative learning, sabi ko, sa actual board exam, pag tinanong yan, the better is always cooperative learning. Bakit? Because cooperative is better than individual. Individual promotes competition. But cooperative learning promotes relationship. Right? 34. Which is considered as positive or favorable consequences of tough competition. Alright. Ito. Personal stress. Achievement is stimulated. Cooperation is reduced. Social inequalities, inequalities is encouraged. So among the options there, of course, the one that is positive, we are going to choose letter B, correct. Achievement is stimulated. So, positive siya na consequence or favorable consequence of top competition. Kasi pag mat mataas yung competition, you tend to to move higher. Kailangan ako mag-stride na mas magaling sa kanila. Parang ganun. Alright? So, the rest are not the answers. Alam nyo people, kahit sa review center, may competition din. So, I'm so happy to tell you na uh, we're still among the, the review centers that is there in Iloilo City, we're still the best in proof ed. That's why sabi ko, I have to give the best of gen ed natin, magbigay tayo ng marami, kasi gen ed is memory, memorization. So, kahit naman, kahit naman ang gen ed nakapikit kanyan, kung alam mo ang sagot, alam mo yan. But definitely, sa proof ed natin, it's more on analysis. So, ang kagandahan ng, ng review natin later on, mag-face-to-face uh, mag, uh, na tayo, or even in online, you are uh, starting to grow your learning, how to choose the correct answer, how to become uh, what we call analytic in terms of uh, anal analysis, in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of uh, analyzing the questions sa proof ed. 
So remember, professional education is 40%. Most of the students is the one, this is the one that they are complaining. Iba yung, iba yung management namin sa discussion sa aming uh, proof ed. So, that's the reason why ang feedback dati, ma'am, ang proof ed talaga, pag nakikinig lang, you can get the correct answer. It will stay in your heart forever kasi um, re- when you review, review it by heart. Hindi na nag-review ka lang para lang check attendance. No. Para nag-learn ka rin. Ah, ito pala. Apply it to your life. Okay? So, number 35. What group is characterized by intimate face-to-face interaction? Is that primary, aggregate, Jessel shop, bureaucracy? Okay? The correct answer is letter A, primary. Okay. Mama, anong, uh, anong tinatawag na Jessel shop? Ang Jessel shop is also a uh, a, a interaction or relationship. But Giselle Schaff is characterized with impersonal and uh, secondary, parang uh, business mind, uh, business relationship. Wala tayong, parang kung sa relationship, uh, sa romance or sexual relationship, no string attached yung Giselle Schaff. Okay? Ang bureaucracy represents the government. Okay? Aggregate is just a destructor. Number 36, a feeling of disorganization and frustration that an overseas contract worker may experience when he encounters entirely different patterns, that's patterns of behavior, ideas and artifacts at his destination in a foreign country. Is that cultural integration, culture shock, assimilation, discrimination? The correct answer is letter B, culture shock. Okay? So, I tell you people, lahat tayo experience this. Hindi mo lang alam kailan or when, where, at uh, anong scenario. Okay? When you feel certain level of culture shock, when you are new to the place that you feel so disorganized. Halimbawa, pumunta ka sa ano, sa isang lugar na they're not eating rice. Medyo may level of culture shock doon. Pumunta ka isang foreign land. Walang port. May culture shock doon. Uh, ako, even here in the Philippines, nag-aral ako sa UP, my first day was a big chunk of my culture shock when I entered the university. Bakit? Pagpasok ko pa lang, pwede pa lang mag-drink ng beer sa loob ng klase. Na culture shock ako. Yung classmate ko nag smoke inside the classroom, na culture shock ako. Yung teacher... They are not supposed they are not allowing students to call sir. Kasi sa atin sir, ma'am, good morning. Medyo may pasipsip. Pero sa UP hindi. You call me on uh you call my you call me on my first name. Filino, Ruby, ganun lang. Bakit ano sabi nila? Masyado daw yung feudal, yung tawag na sir at saka ma'am. So, culture shock ako. Hindi pa, ito pala yun. Ganon. Nakakita ako ng PDA. What is PDA? Public display of affection. Na culture shock din ako. Pwede pala mag lips to lips sa kantin. So, those are culture shock when the patterns of behavior is totally different from yours. The idea is totally different from yours. The surroundings, the artifacts, the one that is uh, common your surrounding that is totally bago ka sa environment na yun and you feel disorganized. That one is culture shock. Num- so the correct answer is letter B. Number 37. Punishment is a po- is a social is a uh, ay, ano ba to? Bakit ang daming A? Punishment is a social control. Ano ba to? Parang mala. If death penalty is imposed to scare offenders and the rest of the society into the following rules, the purpose of punishment is to what? A. Retribution, deterrence, reformation, or prevention. The correct answer is letter B. Deterrence. Okay? So, uh, when you talk about uh, death penalty, madaming form ang death penalty natin. Meron tayong... Uh, Para sa heinous crime, lethal injection. Meron din tayong electric chair. During the time of Marcos, electric chair. 
Okay? Meron din tayong uh, tinatawag na uh, reclusion perpetua. Okay? Reclusion perpetua uh, refers to lifetime imprisonment. Okay? Magsinasabi nating retribution, this is a punishment inflicted on someone as a vengeance for a wrong or criminal act. That is retribution. Okay? On the other hand, pag sinasabi natin, uh, syempre ang reformation, alam natin yan. Pag sinasabi namang di, uh, deterrence, tama? Okay? So, when you say deterrence, on the other hand, an action of discouraging an action or prevent through instilling doubt or fear of the consequence. Okay? So, the correct answer is letter B. That is deterrence. Okay? Bakit siya sabi, dapat may death penalty sa Philippines? Para matakot yung tao. Huwag kang magkamali. Uh, kasi, may the death penalty. Okay? So, death penalty is known to be a capital punishment. 38. Emily Durkheim believed that the major cause of suicide in industrialized nations was the situation where the norms of society is unclear or no longer applicable uh, I'm sorry, ako, to current condition. He called that situation as what? Is it a taboo? Is it an anomie? Is it a technique way? Technique, technique way? Or is it a deviance? So when you say deviance, that one is called uh, uh, against the society. Okay? So, the correct answer here is letter B, anomie. So, what is an anomie? Anomie theory, as we call it. So, the idea of anomie means the lack of normal, ethical, or social standard. Okay? Ano ba? Parang naglindol? Okay, so, baka feeling ko lang. Alright? Here, uh, the answer is anomy. Again, what is anomy? Anomy means the lack of normal, ethical, or social standard. The concept emerged in 1893 when a French sociologist, Emily Durkheim, uh, talked about the idea that the lack of rules and clarity resulted to psychological status of worthlessness, frustration, lack of purpose, and despair. Okay? So, anong theory na anomi na to? Anomi theory. Um, ngayon, madaming nag-suicide, alam nyo ba yan? So, sabi nga ng isang, ano, sa Western Visayas, hindi naman talaga COVID yung nakakatakot na number of death. Number of death, ay hindi ng cases. Kasi malami naman ng cases, nagsusurvive naman yung, naman yung iba. Yung most common na maraming cases din, yung napabayaan yata natin, na tingnan, is the cases of suicide. Alright? Bakit madami nagsuicide? Uh, in this pandemic, pag walang sistema na maibigay yung gobyerno na itong gagawin natin to avoid everything, natatakot yung tao. And that fear was not recognized and was not directed. And so, therefore, some some individual committed suicide. Uh, example ko dito sa amin, na sa Oton, Iloilo, may nagsuicide na lalaki. Bakit? Kasi may simptom siya, sinisipon siya yata, or umuubo siya. So, pumunta siya ng hospital, hindi siya tinanggap. Kasi, hindi naman talaga pang-emergency yung cases niya. Alam mo, because of stress, because hindi na siya nakatulog, worried na worried siya sa, na, na, na ano niya, na, na feel niya na parang trangkaso-like, he committed suicide. So, those are example. Kasi pag hindi klaro, yung patakaran, yung sinasabi natin, it could trigger anxiety. And anxiety can normally cause death or suicide. So, I hope you learned something. And that term to be anomy. So, na napipil yan ng karamihan ngayon. Moses, ako, nag-suffer din ako niyan kasi uh, right after the, uh, I have traveled the, to Sambuanga, Buhol for my lecture, muntik na ako malockdown sa Cebu. Tapos, umuwi ako ng bahay wala nang klase, nag-stop na yung klase ng face-to-face -face namin uh, who will be taking the March 2020 exam. 
medyo na stress ako doon, may parang nagka-depress ako, nag-anxiety ako. So so kaya lang ma- maganda rin naman kasi ang twist ng mindset natin, healthy mind. So nag nag nagbenta-benta ako ng mga online goods, mga ganon, may gift shop ako, nagbibenta ako ng mga ano mga TV bear. So na divert yung attention ko from there. So that's the reason why uh, dapat pag ganon, uh, talk somebody and and load yourself. It's always good that you can share. Kahit yung Facebook, therapeutic din to, class ha. Bakit? If you put something on Facebook, you air out your 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 heart aches, nare-relieve ka. That's the reason why yung tinatawag ng diary writing is also a therapy. Okay? Ito yung lecture, therapy din to. Yung makinig ka dyan, therapy din to. Okay? So, tulong-tulong tayo para to Make feel better for this pandemic. Alright? So, number 39. Wealth, prestige, and power much unequally distributed in a third world countries like Philippines are basis of division of social classes. This pattern inequality is called blank. Yeah. May mayaman, may mahirap. Anong pattern niyan? yan? A. Social movement. B. Social stratification. C. Social problem. D. Social mobility. The correct answer is letter B. That is social move. Um, social stratification. I'm sorry. Social stratification. In a social stratification in the Philippines, naka-divide tayo. Lower class, middle class, and upper class. Pero hindi lang yan. Sa ating social stratification, may tinatawag tayong lower lower, upper lower, lower middle, upper middle, upper lower, upper upper. So yung upper upper sila yung mga kasosyalan, mga kayamanan, ganoon. Ang lower lower isang kahig, isang tuka. Ganyan silang mga dukha. So tayo sa tayo na belong. If you can eat three times a day, you have TV, you have the power, you have appliances at the comfort of your home. You belong maybe in the lower middle or the upper middle if you can afford more. All right? So, mga artista, ah, naghirap sila ngayon. So, they go into middle, ang nagiging uh, upper lower, ang, ang iba naman, naghirap na rin talaga. Dahil wala na talagang project, right? Remember, yung artista malalaki ang kita nila, but project-based. Okay? Pag walang project, wala kang kita. Yun. Alright? That one is called letter B, social certification. Ang letter D naman is social mobility. Could be two. Dalawang uh, type of social mobility I could either be vertical or horizontal. Yung social mobility na vertical, vertical, uh, from lower class, punta ka ng upper class. That's a vertical mobility. Ang horizontal mobility, coming from a slum area, na punta ka sa one big subdivision. That one is horizontal mobility. All right. Social certification din yung India. May tatawag silang caste system. Caste system, may tatawag silang untouchable. Yung lower-lower nila, untouchable or parias. But ang pinaibahan sa Pilipinas, sa Pilipinas, kahit lower class ka, pero nagsipag ka, nag-aral ka, nagtrabaho ka, at nag-aral ka, you can improve your social status. Yun yung kagandahan ng Pilipinas. You can be from lower class to middle or even to the upper class. Uh, Mani Pacquiao, uh, uh, vertical uh, mobility from lower to upper class, horizontal from uh, barangay to a uh, high class of division. Ang sa mga India naman kasi, namamana nila or they inherit whatever the class of their parents. So, pag untouchable ka or parias ka, Paglaki mo, katulad ka rin ng parents mo. Uh, that is uh, sad in the uh, caste system. Uh, take note, walang formal education sa parihas at sa kasudras. Ang pariya, ang sudras, sila yung mga servile class sa caste system. Uh, example, if you have watched Three Idiots na film, uh, si Wang Du is a son of Hardinero na matalino. Okay, si... Rancho ay anak ng mayaman na Brahmans na they are open to school wherever they want. 
So, dahil bobo, pinalit si Wang Bu. Okay? So, makita mo dyan yung tinatawag na social stratification. Alright? Next item, number 40. Philippine social development efforts include anti-poverty and pro-poor programs in determining who are the poor and how the poor are the poor and the government fixes the amount of money a family would need to meet the minimum requirements of uh, decent standard of living. What do you call the amounts of things? Relative poverty, per capita income, culture of poverty, GNP. The correct answer is letter C, the culture of poverty. Alright? So, uh, what do you call the amount of things? Ang per capita income It's the expenditure of the government to certain uh, programs that the government is doing. Ang GNP is a gross national product. This talks about the, uh, what you call that, the, the product at the end of the year of the performance of the government of the in terms of economy. All right? Okay, so next one, number 41. Pero, uh, culture of poverty is not even the correct answer for this. There must be the proper call of about the, uh, what you call that, the amount. The question is about what do you call the amount, so fix. Alright? Hindi sagot ang culture of poverty. Ang culture of poverty ay sagot sa determining the poor who are the poor and how uh, and how poor are the poor okay and the amount that fixes the money that would give them to the family for this standard of living uh, is uh, what you call that supposedly it's a form of provision how do you call that amount so sa America tinatawag nila yung subsidy family subsidies dito sa atin sa, dapat ang tawag dyan for peace subsidy Diba? Mayroon tayong binibigay sa mga four piece. Okay? Ang nang call so uh, amount, so cold. Uh, may ano ka, may ano tawag, ano tawag sa four piece? May uh, sap. Ano sap yon Hindi ko alam yung sap. Ang asawa ko, yun yung ginagawa niya, pero hindi ko rin tindihan yun ang sap. What's the meaning of sap? So, sa, sa kapanahonan niya yun, dapat yun yung tawag. Sap is the amount that is fixed given to the family. Sa Amerika, they call it stimulus for this pandemic. But in Canada, because nag-re-receive nag sila, ang tawag doon is uh, a subsidy, family subsidy. $200 per child, right? So it's not working. So, 40, there is no correct answer there. So, amount to fix. Can you hear me? But among yes, the options there, C is the best option. Um, normally, sabi nila pag walang sagot, letter E, ayaw ko mag-advise uh, niyan because yung tinatawag natin E, which is no error, hindi naman totoo. As test writers normally write the questions with an answer. So, medyo magkamali-mali lang siguro sa mga choices as they encode it. Pero, dapat may term ang amount. So, sa kapanahunan ngayon, sinasabi ko, ang tawag doon, SAP sa pandemic. So, sa so walang pandemic, may 4P sila, nire-receive nilang amount to meet the living of standard. So, in some other countries, may tawag din yun. Sa Amerika, may stimulus yung family. Alright, number 41. Legislations granting special privileges to senior citizens help to neutralize prejudice and discrimination towards a social category based on race, eth uh, ethnicity, sex or AIDS. Of course, when you talk about senior citizen, the correct answer is letter D, AIDS. That is 60 and above. You got 20% discount in all participating uh, establishment, but supposedly for all. Okay, even in the jeepney ride, you have to receive 20%. That's the nice thing or perks of being a senior citizen. Alright, number 41, 42. This is a growing number of advocates of gender sensitivity. In sociology, gender means blank. A, a biological characteristic. 
male or female? B. The expected disposition and behavior that culture assigned to its sex? Or C. The rights and obligation for women as provided by the Constitution? Or D. Homosexuality as a deviant of behavior? The correct answer here is letter B. The expected disposition and behavior that culture assigned to its sex. Sabi niyo naman mo, what about this lesbian and gays? Kasi dami-dami na daw um, gender ngayon. LGBTQ, lesbian, gay, what is B, bisexual, uh, T is, uh, what is T? Uh, Nakalimutan ko ng T. Transgender, I'm sorry. Transgender and Q is queer. Ano yung mga queer? They're still questioning their identity. Okay? So, may, medyo meron tayong L, uh, lesbian. They definitely choose to become lesbian. Medyo gay. Purely gay. Pero yung both this, we, we call that the uh, bisexual. And whatever they call them, that is their what we call sexual orientation. Alright? So, halimbawa, I choose to become lesbian. Uh, lesbian is my way of living. That is my orientation. So, lesbian is my identity. Alright? Okay? So, na, na, nahirapan na yung iba kasi hindi na sila marunong mag-define. Kasi mas marami pa rin lumalabas. May tatawag tayong metro gays. Who are these metro gays? Yung macho, pero bakla. Meron naman tayong tinatawag na um pan um pansexual ano naman tinatawag na pansexual no definition they suit to all kinds okay yung lahat pwede sila that one is called pansexual so napakadami na palang ano no mga definition ito all right number 43 which type of family is more prevalent in the third world than industrialized countries is that extended family, nuclear family, family of orientation, or family of procreation? The correct answer, of course, is letter A. Okay, there are different types of family. Nuclear or conjugal. Okay, again, nuclear or conjugal. This is a family composed of father, mother, and children. The second form of family is the extended or consanguine. What do you mean when you say extended and consanguine? This is a family composed of mother, father, children, tita, tito, lolo, lola. Okay? So, normally dito sa atin, sa third world countries like us, we're more an extended family. Sa mga mayayaman or industrialized, they're more on nuclear family. Alright? Yung family of procreation naman, yung taga padami na padami ng anak. Alright? So, yun yun. Next one, number 44. Persistent nepotism in our society is generally explained as the payment to family members of a debt of gratitude. What's the Filipino term as what? What's your answer, guys? Utang na loob. Correct. Letter C. Utang na loob. Utang na loob. What do you mean when you say nepotism? Do you understand? What nepotism is? Okay. No. Nepotism is hiring relatives. Bakit may hiring relatives? Because of utang na loob. Tama ba? So, binoto ko yan. Binoto ako ng mga mga ano, ng mga family, mga relative ko. So, ngayon, ako na ang president or ako ng mayor. Dapat i-hire ko yan kasi malaki ang utang na loob ko sa pamilya niyan nung eleksyon. So, what is that? Utang na loob. So, nepotism is hiring relatives. Ano naman yung hiya? Hiya is characterized rather with blasphemous. Ano yung blasphemous? Yung namumula, dalagang Pilipina, oye, namumula. Ngayon, wala na. Ang dalagang Pilipina, namumuti na. Dati-dati, ang dalagang Pilipina is always uh, analogized to 
makaiha, mahinhin, mahiyain. Ngayon, mga dalagang Pilipina, wala nang hiya daw. Because of what we call moral evolutionism. What is moral evolutionism? Morality evolves. Nababago yung moralidad. Okay? Dati may hiya, ngayon walang hiya. Dati takot, ngayon walang takot. So everything evolves. Alright? So, bahala na. Characterized with pakipot. Heli-heli bago carry. Bahala na is a tadhana. Believing in tadhana. This is a fatalist point of view. Non-rationalist. Bakit? Yun talaga ito, Pilipinong kultura ito. Ayaw mag-asawa. Ay, ayaw ko sa kanya. Wala, hindi pa ipinanganak na katadhana sa akin. So, yun. Swerte. Believing in swerte. That is also bahala na. Okay, letter D. That, in, that is include in fanaticism. You might be watching, bakit may sinatawag ng fanaticism? Fanati. Okay? Example. Si Duterte ay binabatikos ng mga anti-Duterte. Of course. Subalit, si Duterte ay may fanatic na mga supporters. Ano yung fanatic na supporter? Parang puon, parang talaga natatawa ka kasi parang talagang mga die-hard supporter. Pag, eh, pakiglaban nila, gano'n, sa patayan and all. That is fanaticism. So, sa katoliko, ganun din. Kat fanatic Catholic. Yung mga puon talaga, uh, parang sinasamba na. That is fanaticism. Alright? So, iba yan sa paniniwala, sa pagiging ano na siya, fanatic ka na. Alright? Number 45. There is revival through cooperatives of social unity, neighbor, neighborliness, and mutual helpfulness of Filipinos where they voluntarily work together and pull the resources to achieve shared goals. This Filipino practice is known as compadre system, barangay, amor propio, bayanihan. Give me your Move. Bayanihan. Correct. Letter A, D. Bayanihan. Alright? What is compadre system? Compadre system is equal to padrino system. Okay? Na, uh, ano, nag, nag, ano, uh, pwede mo ba akong ilaka dyan? Parang gano'n. Padrino system yan. So, amor propio, on the other hand, talks about self-love. Hele, hele, bako, keri. Pakipot. Okay? Yung mga, ang mga babae, pag minamahal, may kursunada, aayaw-ayaw, pakipot yun. That is also a more profile. Number 46. The forcible expulsion of a particular ethnic group from a certain territory is termed as blanc. A. Ethnic cleansing. B. Ethnocentrism. C. Genocide. C. D. Racial prejudice. Options? The correct answer there is? A. A. Ethnic cleansing. cleansing. Okay? So, when you talk about naman um, ethnocentrism, sige siya sabi kanina, when a city-bred student feel that they're more superior, alright, uh, from those other, from from those coming from the farm. Okay? Yung tinatawag naman natin uh, genocide, Okay, ay ang pagpatay ng lahi. That's definitely the the ano, the definition. Genocide, parricide, pinatay mo yung partner mo. Okay? Homicide, pinatay mo pumasok sa ba, sa bahay mo or uh, unaccidentally for with self defense, pinatay kasi dami-dami naman. Pag pinatay mo talaga, ito Joshua ha. Tinadad ka ng bala, that's murder. All right? Nabangga mo, hindi mo naman talaga intention na banggain siya, pero namatay yung tao. Your your case must be homicide. Right? Uh, parricide, pag yung asawa, pinatay niya kanyang asawa, parricide yung case. Pamilya. Yung genocide, genocide, pinatay mo ang lahi mo. Okay? And of course, racial prejudice. Madami yan mga racial uh, itim ka. Yung George Ford yun, yung nag-trigger sa American. Uh, go against uh, ra uh, 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 racial discrimination. Kasi maraming racial prejudice. Tapos pag ikaw nag-abroad, sabi na, ah, Asian ka, Filipino ka, 
Ah, Filipino ka domestic helper. <laughs> Racial prejudice. So, 47. Which of the following consists of unwelcome sexual advances, request for sexual favors, verbal or physical conduct of sexual nature? Is that prostitution, sex discrimination, sexual harassment, pornography? The correct answer, give me your choice. Sexual harassment. Correct. Let us see. Sexual harassment. Very good. When you talk about prostitution, you're giving your sexual service in uh, in return of money. Tama? Ang sex discrimination naman, you are deprived of your sexual orientation or sexual activity. Pornography is an obscene material, uh, vulgar materials that uh, show off the new nudity and sexual intercourse that's pornography okay the one that is asking is uh, is known to be sexual harassment madami daming form of sexual harassment pinching rubbing your breast kissing you without uh, consent that is a sexual harassment molesting or acts of lasciviousness, lasciviousness that is sexual harassment even sending a nude photo is a sexual harassment. Uh, meron din tinatawag na sexual blackmail. Ha? Huh? Papatayin ko ganito, ilalabas ko sa ano ang ano mo ang ang uh, ano tawag doon, ang video mo pag hindi ka mag-sex sa akin. So you have to be careful of also of whom you are chatting online kasi pwede ka ring nag-chat ka and they're asking for sexual favors tapos you give in. Okay? So, careful ka doon. Bakit? Nire-record na nila yung, yung nude photo mo. Kasi, normally, pag naghihingi yan, guwapo, sabi niya, can you be my, ano, my chatmate, ganun, ganun. And they are asking your nude photos and nakiki-join ka rin, nakiki-play ka rin. O, ito na. Pumasok na. Uh, extortion. Uh, extortion. Why? Tatawagan ka na. Bayaran mo kami ng 50,000. Pag hindi, ilalabas namin yung nude photo so, that is happening online. Alright? Number 48. Which one is positive trends in the area of Philippine politics? A. Shift, uh, shift is role of government from a regulatory agency to facilitative role through deregulation and privatization. B. Growing influence of prime lords in political governments. Or C. Empowerment of local government units. Okay, and D, both A and C. The correct answer there is letter D, both A, which is the shape of rogue government, and C, except letter B, ha? Why? Empowerment of local government units. That's very passive here. Uh, you give power to the local government. Yung tatawag natin federalism. Ah, nakikita nung mga mayor, mga local government official, why are they support of the government? Because sabi ni Duterte, let's push the federalism by giving power to the local government units. So, the, kagaya ng uh, US, ang US kasi is federal government. Uh, si Trump yung president nila, nila, but each state, the US has 50 states. States of Hawaii, state of Florida, may mga governor who act as a little president. So, gusto-gusto ng, ano, ng mga local government. Kaya lang, problema mo, pagpurakot ang local government mo. Yung problema mo naman dito is that, is the Philippine ready? For example, Kaluya Island. If they become uh, confederalist na point of view, what will happen to Kaluya? What will happen to uh, small islands? So, siguro Boracay can survive because madami naman siya negosyo. But those small islands that they cannot survive uh, through their their logistics and their earnings, uh, local earnings, so magiging problema. All right. So the correct answer there is A and C. So ito naman yung deregulation policy natin sa letter A and privatization. Ito yung uh, yung government uh, take off their hands. Pag tinatawag na deregulation policy. Example ito yung gasoline station or ang cartel ng gasoline prov provider dito sa Pilipinas. Okay? So, if you have observed, parang wala namang say ang gobyerno 
sa pagtaas o pagbaba ng gas o ng uh, gasoline. Bakit? Kasi deregulated sila. Ano siya sabi niya deregulated? The government takes off their hand to, to regulate the uh, gasoline industry. That's why, uh, ang gasoline ngayon, competition din sila ng pataasan o pababaan ng gasoline. And the privatization is given to the corporate people to manage certain government offices. Alright? Number 49. How can congressional hearings Drugs on the National Penitentiary be a scientific approach to social legislation. A. Seeking new approaches to public service. B. Allowing Congress to examine issues. C. Defining the provision of laws. Or D. Scrutinizing via TV coverage. The correct answer here is letter B. Allowing Congress to examine issues. Uh, madami kasi tayong pagtuunan ng pansin. We have what we call three branches of the government. That is one is judicial. That includes chief justice and the 14 associate justices. The second one is the legislative. Ang legislative natin na branch of government is composed of the lower house and the upper house. The lower house is the Congress and the upper house is the Senate. Okay, can you imagine that one? So, whatever bills that is passed in the Congress, dadaan siya sa Senate. Alright? So, pwedeng pumasa sa Congress, pero hindi pinasa ng Senate. Okay? So, yung uh, Senate naman is 24 senators, and we have 250, 301 pala yung Congress natin. Okay? So, Whatever policies that is coming from this uh, legislative shall be signed by the president. All right. So, example natin yung Bayanihan 2. Na-approve na ng Senate last week of August, pero hindi sinign, no, hindi nag-sign si Duterte sa Bayanihan 2. Okay, so Bayanihan 2 class, there were, there is thing, there are two things that were possible to happen. Within 15 days, it will become a law when the president will not sign it, even rather the president will not sign it. It will automatically become a law. However, pag ang president hindi nag-sign, tapos nag-veto, so yung veto ang term, vineto niya yung, uh, yung uh, bill na pinasa ng Congress at saka ng, ng, ano, ng uh, Senate. So ibig sabihin, walang effect ang law na yun. So, pag hindi niya veneto, okay lang. Because after 15 days, it will become a law. Pero pag nag yung president, ibig sabihin, hindi niya gusto yung law. Alright? So, that one. Okay? So, the correct answer there is letter um, saan ba ako? B. Allowing Congress to examine issues. Madami silang uh, examine ng issues. Sa ABS-CBN, medyo, ano lang, medyo hindi tugma ang desisyon nila sa investigation. Okay? Kasi wala namang, wala namang proven na violation ng EBS because walang filed cases against sa kanila. So, yung mga malalaking violation ng iba ni inignore na ngayon. Yung pang, there is social injustice there uh, in terms of uh, uh, examining the the real issues of ABS-CBN. Alright? Uh, yung, yung GMA nagbibenta ng black box nila. ABS, CBN ka na. Yung Sky Cable, yung uh, yung big uh, cable industry, digital din ng ano yung isang frequency nila divided into different channels. ABS, CBN, uh, kinuha talaga yung frequency. But, so there's unfair. But anyway, Lopez has accepted it anyway. Alright? Number 50, last item. Under the exchange theory or work should be rewarded, what advanced professional work through the effort of PRC, A, board examination, B, licensure examination, C, examination produces computerization, or the outstanding professional award. So, among the options there, the correct answer is letter D. So, the exchange theory of letter D, they award outstanding professional awards, such as yung mga top, the, who top the board, ganoan. Uh, right now, nire-regulate nila yung tinatawag nating CPD or the Continuing Professional 
Development Program of the PRC. So, na lahat dapat may trainings and seminars. Okay? So, sino bang atat sa PRC? Yung Teachers Board Exam or different board examiners of different uh, board examination or licensure examination. So, how many licensure examination that the PRC is offering? 40 examination. That's sabi, sabi ko nga. Uh, 40 examination. And uh, there are a lot of review center na focus lang sa let, sa agriculture. Sa kami, agriculture at saka let. So, we are soon opening nursing review. So, yung sinasabi ko na 40 board exam ang inahandle ng ng let, ah, ng let, ng TRC. And there will be a lot more. That's why ako, I'm looking forward to open later on uh, engineering review because walang engineering review center sa Iloilo at saka yung nursing also because I've been handling 18 years I, uh, I'm doing this uh, bis uh, business in the class in both uh, let and uh, nursing so it's time for me to open nursing program to cater again St. Gabriel College in Calito alright class any questions so far? Why? Any questions so far? Um, I hope you learned. I hope you learned something. Why? What did you learn today, Joshua? Oh, You learned anumi, right? You learned. Yes, about suicide and the need of pain. Yeah. Ah, but my other, pagod yung on a suicide mo, pero nandipa tani ko. Talk about the direction. Talk about ah, kwan la uras. Talk about sa ano pa dito ma. May amo pagod yung nandipa kwan mo mo nandipat na ako ma'am. Okay. So anyway, you have to you have all the time to I know to remember those and uh, stay safe everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much my audience. Bye. Thank you so much. Okay. So we will Bye. be posting the top Thank notcher. You. Thank, you. Thank you so much. God bless. Good afternoon. Okay, bye-bye. Oh, hello, hello.